Hey sisters, welcome back to HB Ministries, a ministry for you to believe, behold, and become all God's created you to be in whatever season of life. So everybody that is taking part in the August study, welcome. If you're new and you're just passing by because of the title, we are studying the book of Nehemiah in August. If you want to know more, the best thing to do is just start right here. Uh, kind of go take a little um, adventure over to my website at heatherbaxter.com. And I'm sure when you listen to some past videos and you kind of come couple up with me on Instagram Live, uh, my Instagram Live account is going to be located right down below the drop down of this video. You will be able to catch up really quick because I promise to make it easy for you. But if you head over to heatherbaxter.com, there is a calendar there right under the August link. So hit August devotionals right below uh, that you will see an August calendar. In that August calendar, it's going to tell you everything that we're doing every day. There's going to be a clickable link for you to watch the video if you need to watch a video. Over to the side each week, there's going to be a handout that you're going to be working on. And then every single day, I'm bringing you a devotional. And that is going to kind of partner with whatever we're learning. Now, today's devotional is more podcast style. So you can put this on in your kitchen. If you're going for a walk, then just have a listen. In. But what we're going to do is we are just going to kind of review a little bit more and talk a little bit more about session one. So we are in session one, which is really Nehemiah chapter one and two. And I kind of want to break it down a little bit more and talk to you specifically about Nehemiah, who was a man that was crying about crying out about something. Now, ladies, we all have things that we are crying out about just this morning in my quiet time, I was thinking about three situations and I was praying about them in regards to how um, different women are sitting in their homes, especially going through a pandemic like we are right now. And on top of it, they're experiencing their own setbacks or their own crisis. I have one friend that I'm praying about. Her husband lost his job. And now to lose your job on top of of everything that's going on in today's world, um, that's a distraction and a crisis itself. Because now you have the challenge of trying to find new work. You have the challenge of making a house payment and providing. Now on top of that, you feel like you've become a burden to each other because the spouse is feeling a little bit of depression because he cannot be the protector or the provider. And the wife is feeling overwhelmed by his emotion. There's scenario one. Scenario two, a friend of a friend's just lost their uh, father and her husband just in this last week. He was only 58. He lost his battle to cancer. But what I see in this scenario is best friends losing best friends, a wife losing her best friend, daughters losing their father, one daughter that will be married soon, and how young? 58. That's a crisis. That's a distraction. That's a setback. That's trauma. Another scenario is a friend right here that I'm praying for in HB Ministries. Never met her. She's just part of the community. She's a lifer. And she reached out and was asking for prayer because she is going through a season where there's just so much pain in her body. We go through physical setbacks. And sometimes when we go through physical setbacks, it not only becomes a burden for us, but it becomes a burden for those around us, perhaps our husband. And when he feels that burden, we're not you know, providing maybe the way we need to because we're needing more in this season of life. Both characters don't know how to respond to each other and we lose the abundancy um, to stretch. We lose that feel, I don't know if the word's abundancy. Maybe we, we, we lose the drive and we lose the desire to stretch uh, for each other because we become overwhelmed by each other's needs. That's crisis. That's trauma. That's something to cry out about. That's a ruin in your life. And so the reason why I'm bringing a few different scenarios is because I want you to realize in Nehemiah chapter 1, Verses 1 through 11 specifically, we're reading about a man who cried out about a wall. He cried out about a ruin. And I want you to realize that your cry is important. We cry about a lot of things. 
Sometimes we just cry simply because we're at a wedding. Or we cry because we've seen our children graduate and it's our last baby graduating. That was me just this past month. Or we, we cry when our children leave home. My son left for the Navy. I'm going up on a year, year and a half pretty soon of not seeing him. That's a cry. Sometimes we cry at the birth of our children or our grandchildren. We cry at sad movies. We cry because we know our daughters are hurting inside emotionally and it's just something in life they have, we have, they have to learn. But I want you today to look at a man that was crying about a broken wall. And when you're reading your notes, which again, ladies, if you're new, you're receiving your notes over at heatherbaxter.com, click the August devotionals, you'll see the August calendar, and you'll end up right where you're supposed to be. Now for today's podcast, we are on Wednesday, and we are talking specifically today about session one in the August calendar. And session one involves chapters one and two of Nehemiah. And so I'm just going to pull out a few things and just kind of allow your mind to run with some of these thoughts as you're answering the questions on your PDF form. Now, I am going to begin by making an assumption that I hope is true for everyone that's listening today, that you want to be used by God and that you want to be heard by God, by God, your cry. Okay, I think that's important because otherwise we feel like we're in spiritual starvation. We feel like we're in a place where uh, we're not being heard, even if we're crying out. And what I want you to see is that when we look at the life of Nehemiah, he began to take his cry about a ruin and a hardship and he learned to look at it from an angle of how I could serve or lead during this time of rebuilding. Now, what are you rebuilding? Are you rebuilding a time of loss? Do you need to be rebuilding during a season of grief? Are you rebuilding during a season of physical pain? Now, I bet you're asking right now, Heather, how do I rebuild when I am really in a time that I'm trying to understand how God is going to be able to use an unusable me because my emotions are pretty much captivating me. Well, I want you to see, and that's what I want you to understand, that what happened in Nehemiah's life was that he was not going to sit in this room defenseless. He was not going to allow the enemy to attack him. He was going to attempt to rebuild with a plan. Now, it may be as simple as getting up in the morning and smiling at somebody if you're physically sick or not feeling well, but you are going to do something positive. It may be getting up and facing the fact that you are in a season of grieving and allowing yourself to grieve healthy, allowing people to love and serve on you and realizing that your God wink is going to come through another person, that you do not have to be the person that's got everything under control. And I love that because in Nehemiah, his emotion was so sad and broken in the beginning that all he knew how to do was cry out. That's all he knew how to do because the condition of his heart was desperate. He knew that the walls and the gates had been destroyed and he just had this vision of what he could see in front of me and it made him weep. It made him mourn. And then he went into action. He fasted and praised, prayed for days, prayed for days, really wanting God to do something with the condition. So what is the condition of our hearts? What is the condition of our season? What is actually going on? So here's a few things I want you to think about today. If you have a pen while you're listening, you maybe you're making dinner right now, maybe you're sitting out by the pool, maybe you're in the car, maybe you're going on a walk. But here's some things I want you to think. Number one, the person God always uses has a burden. 
whether it's a burden for what's going on in your life or a burden for other people, he wants to use you. So sometimes that can just lift us up out of a pit, just knowing that right there. Maybe you need to ask God, you know what, Lord, whatever is happening in this burden season that I am in right now, would you show me people, other people that are in a great need and allow me to pray? Now you think, why? Why do I need to be praying for somebody else when I'm grieving? Why do I need to be praying for somebody else when I'm hurting? Why do I need to be praying for somebody else when I'm in need of this and this and this? And there's so much burden and emotion around me because let me tell you, when God hears your prayer in your season, he blesses. I promise you, he will renew your mind and he will bless you. It's sometimes just taking the thoughts off of ourselves and praying for something else. Maybe praying for your daughter. Maybe praying for somebody else that's um, experiencing the same grief over the same person as you. I want you to get involved with God and couple up with God in that same season so you are not paralyzed by your emotion. You are not overwhelmed by your need and the needs around you. And the enemy is not going to run you over with that emotional thought where you feel like you're just in the emotional survival mode. Do not go there. So I'm just showing you that if you do this, I promise that God will bless you. Matthew 9, 36 to 38 says, seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were dis distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Listen, one thing we know is we have a shepherd that loves us and he is going to get us through. We will experience a harvest. We will in due time. But Lord, give me the eyes to just see the needs of other people. Give me the heart of Jesus to feel compassion for them, for those around me. This is going to raise you up to where you need to be. Amen. Second, I don't want you to commit yourself to something just because um, the need is there or because I'm telling you, I want you to commit yourself to recognizing the need in somebody else despite your pain, despite the burden in your soul, because I want you to experience a God wink. Amen. Okay. That's what it's all about. Because let me tell you, there are people hurting everywhere. There's a burden for hurting, hurting people everywhere we look. And I'm telling you, Nehemiah's burden was focused by seeing other people that were hurting outside the burden that he was carrying. Now, the interesting thing is that his burden was for people. It was for the rune. It was for those around him. But then he took his, uh, he took his emotion away from that burden by looking at what others, people's, uh, I'm sorry, I know my, I'm like trying to explain this so well, looking at what other people's needs were. So it was like assessing the problem within a problem. Does that make sense? Um, sometimes we just got to organize the root and we have to look at where we're lacking resources and what is required. And sometimes the resources are lacking right in the emotion of our own family because we don't have enough emotion to go around. Amen. And so if God can just buoy you up a little to love, to smile, to give, um, to reach, you're going to see a God wink, a stirring. Um, honestly, you're going to see a smile come over your husband that you didn't expect. You're going to see some hope come over your husband that you didn't expect. You're going to see a smile come over your grieving daughters or over your grieving friends. And in the midst of all of this, it's going to warm your grieving soul, your desperate soul, your physical pain. It just works that way. I can't explain it. It's just the way God's mercy and his grace works. And so I'm just asking you to take this dare to get distracted from the root of your own problem. And that's really where Nehemiah started. His burden was lightened by seeing the need of other people, even in the midst 
of his need. It makes no sense. It seems like it's so hard, but you can only do this by the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of God's love living inside of you. So I pray that that helps you because we're going to talk about the rest of this week that God is going to now give that person um, that he's using in the midst of their own problem a vision for their purpose and other people's purposes. It's the way God gets the wheel spinning, if I may. It's the way he gets things moving in the right direction. Um, so think about that. Think about that today. Uh, it's it's pretty challenging for me to think that, wow, one of my, one of life's transforming truths is that God's glory works through my burden and my pain when I focus on something else or someone else when I'm struggling. Man, it just, it's hard to comprehend. But I'll tell you what, we're all in great distress. We all have walls in between us right now. We all have something that's holding us back from glorifying a big God or really realizing that a big God is working in this world. So we need to learn to love. Love outside of ourselves. Love outside of our burden. Love outside of our crisis. Love outside of our uh, distraction. And really what that is, is dutifully obeying Him. It's joyfully obeying Him. It's bringing glorify the glorification to him. It's surrendering what is bothering us. It is learning to sacrifice our own feelings and our own emotions. And it brings satisf satisfaction to God, which then brings around his ultimate purposes. Is that amazing? Gosh, that's so crazy. He, we have to be willing to count the world as loss for the sake of God's purpose. We have to be willing to count all of our burdens as a loss for the sake of God's purposes, our needs as a loss for the sake of God's purposes, making somebody else a higher position than ourselves. Man, I don't know. I don't even know how I'm going to wrap my um, mind around this, but that's what I began to think when I was thinking about Nehemiah and how he went out to really create a vision to serve, um, began to pray and mourn and cry out, but it was for something else. And let me tell you, you're in a season right now and God is going to use you. I don't care if you feel like you're on a lonely island right now, God is going to use you. God has a rebirth. Listen, sisters, complications of childbirth, I don't even want to go there, but look at the joy in the end. There's more pleasure in the end. But you have to be willing to overcome obstacles. You have to learn to push through opposition, to push through uh, anything that looks like a crisis or a distraction. And you need to buoy up and realize up front that you will encounter these problems. You aren't going to feel right. You aren't going to feel like you're in a per perfect place because you're experiencing trauma um, for whatever you feel like you're being pulled through right now. But don't throw away your life. Don't throw away your hurt. Realize God has a vision and a purpose, and he's committed to that purpose, but he needs to use you. So, gosh, I hope that that was a blessing. Here's a couple questions I'm just going to throw your way. Number one, with all of these overwhelming thoughts that I just uh, brought to you, do you realize that there's needs in the world? Do you realize that there's needs in your husband, your friends, your daughters, your best friend? And how can a person know where God wants him to be used or focused when they're in such a season of need. What did Nehemiah do? He cried out and prayed and God brought him a vision of burden in somebody else. And for some reason, it stirred up a whole revival. Try it. Let's just try it. Number two, how can we fight and shrug off the subtle, the subtle, aggressive worldliness that keeps seeping into ourselves and to the people around us, how do we shrug that off and just focus on loving outside of ourselves? I find that hard to do because I feel like I need my needs met first. But when we focus that God has a purpose, it's to bring him glory, not our happiness, but then he works the two out together for 
his good purposes. And then everything works out together. I don't know, but that brings me some really good peace. And it makes me want to sacrifice. It, want, it makes me want to cling so tightly uh, to what God wants me to do. And so sometimes we just have to re be reminded of his promises and his truth and what his word says. So I pray this stirs you to believe. Believe higher than what's going on in your life right now. And grab on to what Nehemiah did in just those first 11 verses. So I pray this was a blessing. Thanks for hanging out and talking to me today. Um, remember to have, head over to heatherbaxter.com and subscribe so you can get the newsletter on Thursdays. Always Thursdays, I send out a newsletter for our live studies that are located right on YouTube at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we just study together, we chat together, and we learn God's word together. So I love you guys so much. Um, and for those that are taking uh, part of the, we were calling it a roadside challenge, which you heard in yesterday's video, where I just wanted you guys to go and pick flowers. Somebody actually posted a picture of their flowers that they picked right in their backyard. So if it's not roadside, go to your backyard and pick something. I don't even care if it's a branch off a tree. Put it in water and post it over on the HB Bible Study and Resource page, which is our community page. And let's get excited about everybody's creation of what they picked in their backyard. Maybe put it in front of your Nehemiah notes and clip a picture. And again, I'm going to lift this up before I say goodbye. That was my creation of my roadside yesterday. And I'm sorry, I call them pussy willows. They're really cattails. Little do I know. Um, but yeah, I pulled those out on the side of the road and just uh, been working in front of them today. And I love it. So I pray today's a uh, little bit of a chat was um, something that blessed you and let me know how it touched you, what spoke to you or what is difficult um, that you pulled out today. Love you ladies and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Why don't we say that it's too late for us now? Why do we stay when I blame you for the things that weigh me down?